Clinical Features The clinical features of thoracic outlet syndrome depend on the anatomic structure affected by compression and are more pronounced during and after overhead activity. Compression of the subclavian artery Mild arm ache and fatigue Pulselessness, pain, pallor, paresthesias, and coldness in the affected arm a decrease in blood pressure of more than 20 mm of mercury in the affected arm compared with the contralateral arm are all the features due to compression of the subclavian artery. Compression of the subclavian vein results in swelling, venous distension, diffuse hand or arm pain, heaviness in the arm, and a risk of thrombosis of the arm which is termed as Page Schroeder's disease. Compression of the part of the brachial plexus can cause sensory loss or paresthesias, pain in the neck and the arm, and atrophy of the hand muscles, which is popularly known as Gilead Sumner hand. Note that the swelling and venous distension in the arm may be a sign of venous thrombosis of the arm as well. Diagnostics. Diagnosis of neurologic thoracic outlet syndrome is often clinical, but electrodiagnostic tests and imaging can exclude other diagnoses. Arterial or venous duplex ultrasounds are the initial diagnostic tests for an arterial or venous thoracic outlet syndrome respectively. The role for computed tomography or magnetic resonance imaging is evolving and provides important diagnostic information, especially when ultrasound results are equivocal. Conventional arteriography and venography remain useful diagnostic modalities, especially when initiation of thrombolysis is considered. Radiographs of the spine, shoulder, and collarbone can show bony abnormalities, whereas CD or MRI imaging is mainly done to exclude other conditions that present similarly. Other tests depend on the suspected underlying pathology, like suspected arterial thoracic outlet syndrome requires an MR angiography, a venous thoracic outlet syndrome requires a duplex ultrasonography, whereas neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome requires electromyography and nerve conduction studies. Treatment in mild cases, physical therapy, weight reduction, NSAIDs, thrombolytics with continued anticoagulation in the case of venous thrombosis is required. In cases of acute vascular insufficiency or progressive neurologic dysfunction or if conservative treatment fails, a thoracic outlet decompression surgery is required. This includes a transaxillary resection of the cervical rib or the first rib, or angioplasty or venous or arterial bypass for severely narrowed vessels. Here is a CAT scan image of a 25-year-old female who presented with a pulsatile left supraclavicular mass. A CAT scan reformatted in the coronal view shows an oblique band of tissue as shown here with this yellow arrow impinging on and is compressing the subclavian artery resulting in postenotic dilation of the artery. The dilated segment of the subclavian artery correlated with the pulsatile mass noted clinically. Now here is an arteriogram demonstrating arterial thoracic outlet syndrome. This is an arteriogram of an 18 year old paratrooper who complained of tingling in his fingers when he elevated his arms to deploy his parachute. A subclavian arteriogram with the left arm in neutral position, as shown here in panel A, shows a patent left subclavian artery. You can see that the flow is clear. Repeat arteriogram with the arm elevated, as shown here in panel B, shows an abrupt cutoff of the subclavian artery with delayed distal filling of the axillary artery, as shown here. If you can appreciate this, that there is only a thin line, thin whitish line 
that goes through. So that represents that there is an obstruction of the subclavian artery. His symptoms were reproduced with arm overhead abduction. Now here is an image showing the anatomy of thoracic outlet. The thoracic outlet refers to the confined space between the clavicle and the first rib. Structures that pass through this region include the nerves of the brachial plexus, the subclavian artery, and the subclavian vein. Here are some of the MRI images of a neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome. The right brachial plexus magnetic resonance neurography is shown here, with the coronal and axial T1 beta images as shown in panel A and B, and a coronal fat suppressed T2 weighted image as shown in panel C, which reveals a thick fibrous band, which can also be appreciated in panels A and B, as shown here. These are causing distortion and edema of the right brachial plexus, if you can see here in panel A and panel C. The oblique coronal fat suppressed T2 weighted neurographic image, as shown here in panel D, can further illustrate a selective thickening of the C8 root, as shown right here. The bilateral cervical ribs on x-rays in a patient with thoracic outlet syndrome. Here is an image of a 27-year-old female patient who presented with loss of the right radial pulse and right hand ischemia. A chest x-ray, as shown here in panel A, shows bilateral asymmetric cervical ribs. A magnified view, as shown here in panel B, shows a shorter right cervical rib compared with the left. And geography confirmed arterial compression by the cervical rib as the source of embolic disease to the right hand. That concludes our video on thoracic outlets in Rome.